Crucial Differences Between God and Jesus Christ It is imperative to realize and understand the critical differences between the nature of God and the nature of Jesus Christ, who was but a human prophet. The Bible proves that Jesus Christ was not all-powerful and that he cannot be God. God is almighty, all-powerful, and all-knowing, and as Jesus Christ is human, he has limitations. Mark chapter 6 verse 5 states that Jesus Christ could not perform any miracles except for a few. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Mark chapter 6 verse 5. Mark chapter 8 verses 22 to 26 states that when Jesus tried to heal a blind person, he was unsuccessful on the first attempt and had to try again. Would God fail to do anything on his first try? The Bible demonstrates that God in the heavens is all-knowing, meaning his knowledge is infinite, which, of course, is true. Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Psalm 147, verse 5. On the other hand, the Bible demonstrates that Jesus Christ was not all-knowing and had limited knowledge, as he did not know the date of Judgment Day. But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. Here is another similar verse. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. How can Jesus Christ be divine and part of the Trinity if he does not even know the date of Judgment Day? The answer is simple. Jesus Christ is a human prophet and not God. Mark chapter 11 verses 12 and 13 shares a story that demonstrates Jesus Christ's limited knowledge. Jesus Christ approached a fig tree to eat some fruit but found none. This was because it was not fig season. If Jesus Christ were all-knowing, he would have known that the tree would not bear figs, as it was not fig season. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing a fig tree in leaf in the distance, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Mark chapter 11, verses 12 and 13. The Bible quotes, And Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. This implies that Jesus Christ could not have been all-knowing as his wisdom grew, meaning his wisdom was less at one point. God does not learn as he goes. He is always all-knowing. God is independent of everything and does not need to eat, drink, or sleep. God does not sleep nor slumber, nor does sleep overtake him. Jesus Christ, on the other hand, ate, drank, slept, and urinated because he was human. He suffered pain and felt emotions. This differentiates Christ from God the Almighty. If Jesus Christ were in fact divine, he would not have needed to perform human actions and functions. The Bible states that Jesus Christ died, but God cannot die. If a person dies, he cannot be God, by definition. God has always existed and will always exist. Jesus Christ, on the other hand, was born of a mother and came into existence at one point, so he had a beginning. However, God does not have a beginning nor an end. God does not need help or prayer 
as he can do anything. He is the possessor of everything. Jesus Christ, on the other hand, needed assistance from God above, so he prayed to God. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. Jesus Christ prayed in the same manner Muslims pray by prostrating themselves to the ground, since Jesus Christ was a Muslim. Remember that, by definition, a Muslim is someone who submits himself to God the Almighty above. If Jesus Christ was God, the Son of God, or divine in any way, why would he need to fall into humility and pray to God? Will you tell me that Jesus Christ was praying to himself or to a part of himself? Where is the logic in that? Jesus Christ was praying to the one true God in the heavens. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. John chapter 17 verse 3. The Holy Quran confirms that Jesus Christ was praying to the one and only God in the heavens. And shall make him a messenger to the children of Israel, who will say to them, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. That is, I create for you from clay something in the shape of a bird. Then I blow in it, and it becomes a living bird by the will of Allah. And I cure the blind born and the leper, and I cause the dead to become alive by the will of Allah. And I inform you of what you eat and what you store in your homes. In this there is surely a sign for you, if you are truly believers. I have come to you confirming that book which is sent down prior to me, that is, the Torah, and to make permissible for you some of what was prohibited to you. I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. So fear Allah and obey me. Allah is surely my Lord and your Lord. So worship him. This is the straight path. Quran chapter 3 verses 49 to 51. Jesus Christ instructed his disciples to pray to God in the heavens and never told them to direct their worship to him nor did he ever tell them that he was divine, God, or Son of God. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Luke chapter 11 verse 2. The Bible states that one cannot see God in this world. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Exodus chapter 33 verse 20. Clearly, the disciples and others saw Jesus Christ in this world because he was not God. According to the Bible, if he were God, they would not have been able to see him. Jesus Christ acknowledged that God above is greater than him. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. John chapter 14 verse 28. Jesus Christ was but a human prophet, sent from God to his people, and he did not speak on his own authority. He told only that which God above commanded him to. The words I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority. John chapter 14 verse 10. Jesus had no power to do anything. He could only do what God above, his creator, allowed and willed him to do. The Bible quotes Jesus Christ saying, By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. John chapter 5 verse 30. Christians say that Jesus Christ was a savior, 
but he could not even save himself. He needed saving himself. As stated in the previous chapter, Jesus Christ begged God to save him right before he thought he would get crucified. By definition, God cannot be limited. If one were to say that Jesus Christ transformed from God into a human when he was on earth, rendering him limited power and knowledge, he could not be God, because God, by definition, is almighty, all-powerful, and all-knowing, and can never be limited. Moreover, Romans chapter 1, verse 23 states, God is immortal, as he cannot die, which is true and exchanged the glory of the immortal God. However, Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to Christians. How can God die? Jesus Christ grew and changed from a baby to a boy to a man, proving that he cannot be God as the Bible states God does not change. I, the Lord, do not change. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. God says he is not a man in the Bible. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I devastate Ephraim again, for I am God and not a man, the Holy One among you. I will not come against their cities. Hosea chapter 11 verse 9. Also in this verse, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. This verse states explicitly that our God is not the Son of Man. Jesus Christ is called a man throughout the Bible. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. Acts chapter 2 verse 22. Also, as it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. John chapter 8 verse 40. Moreover, here, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 In many verses, the Bible states that Jesus Christ is the Son of Man. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. Moreover, in, And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. John chapter 5, verse 27. The term Son of Man is used throughout the Bible, referencing different individuals. The Bible references how the devil tempted Jesus for 40 days. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for forty days. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Is it logical for God, who is almighty and created Satan, to be tempted by Satan? Of course not. Jesus Christ was a human, therefore was able to be tempted by Satan. The Bible explicitly states that God cannot be tempted by evil. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. James chapter 1 verse 13. People of the book, do not go to excess in your religion and do not say anything about God except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was nothing more than a messenger of God. His word directed to Mary, a spirit from him. So believe in God and his messengers, and do not speak of a trinity. Stop this, that is better for you. 
God is only one God. He is far above having a son. Everything in the heavens and earth belongs to him, and he is the best one to trust. Quran, chapter 4, verse 127.